When you think of fairy tales, what comes to mind? Knights? Castles? People with a strange affinity for kissing frogs? Maybe, but if you're anything like me, you think of a terrifying hedgehog man riding a giant chicken as he plays a pair of bagpipes into the night. Let's talk about that one. Our story begins with a lowly peasant, who we'll be calling Quimby Rattlecat. Now, Quimby had a beautiful wife, a decent acreage, and a host of award-winning pigs. But this was the Middle Ages, and people were weird, I guess, and instead of acknowledging his callous accomplishments, Quimby's neighbors decided to endlessly torment him instead. The root of this torment was Big Q's embarrassing lack of a son, and so, after years of verbal abuse, Mr. Rattlecap declared that he would have a son, even if it were a hedgehog. Now that's a dangerous thing to claim in a fairy tale, and sure enough, before he could say cosmic irony, Mr. and Mrs. Rattlecap were gifted with a beautiful, bouncing baby hedgehog boy. Not cut out for the intricacies of raising an Aridacea die, the Rattlecaps simply shunted their problems away by forcing the young boy to sleep in a pile of straw they had conveniently placed behind their stovetop. Presumably for a situation just like this one. And so, Hans the Hedgehog lived there for quite some time, until one day, his dearly devoted father asked him if he needed anything from the market. Seems a little out of character, considering the rest of the story makes it sound like the only thing Mr. Rattlecap ever said to his son was, why the hell are you a hedgehog on the day of his birth? But regardless, upon hearing that simple question, that simple gesture of kindness, Hans took a long, hard look at himself, a young, starving boy sleeping behind a stovetop, and he said to his father, you know what? The only thing I need from you is a set of bagpipes, baby, let's go! And then Mr. Rattlecap probably said, oh boy, am I glad he didn't ask for love and affection, cause I can just buy you bagpipes. And so he did, and that very night, Hans the Hedgehog, bagpipes in hand, climbed aboard a giant chicken, and rode off into the sunset. Why a giant chicken was just readily available, I couldn't tell you, but what are you gonna do? From there, Hans basically just became your typical folkloric hermit character, just riding chickens and playing bagpipes, you know the type. But there's one point in the story where Hans makes a deal with the king, and has the king put the deal in writing so he'll have to honor his word. But Hans is illiterate, so when the king just writes a bunch of nonsense, Hans can't tell and gets thoroughly duped. Moral of the story, learn how to read. Moving on. Our next story takes us to the fictional land of Germany, where there lived a mouse, a bird, and a sausage, all of whom were roommates and each given a single job for the benefit of the house. The bird would gather firewood, the sausage would cook, and the mouse would fetch the water, light the fire, sweep the floor, and perform basic maintenance whenever the water heater gave out. Like I said, they were each given one job. One singular little job. Just one. But despite the blatant overworking of a rodentine friend, it was actually the bird that decided their current arrangement was a little unfair. You see, one day he met another bird out in the forest, and this new bird, who I'll be calling Yoshtashine of the Shire, apparently had his own roommate situation going on. Presumably with a gerbil and a slice of pecan pie. And since he's the expert of divisional labor, Yoshtashin claimed that Mr. Bird was getting fleeced by the other two and begged of him to fight for equal working conditions. Moved by Yoshishine's eloquent words, the bird confronted his roommates, and after much deliberation, their roles were changed thusly. Sausage would collect firewood, while the mouse cooked, and Bird did everything else. Not sure that's the best way of him getting less work, but whatever, not my funeral. Unfortunately, on the very first day of this new system, Sausage was brutally eaten alive by a local dog. Who could have possibly guessed that sending an unsupervised slice of minced meat into an unruly forest was a bad idea? But as you might expect, after a few hours of Sausage not coming home, Bird would eventually fly out into the forest to try and find his missing friend. Meanwhile, back at the homestead, Mouse prepared dinner, but sadly she had no idea how to cook, so instead she just thought back to how Sausage used to do it. Of course, being a sausage, she could just climb into whatever scolding broth she was cooking and imbue the stew with her natural grease and salt-laden flavor. Which sounds like a health code violation, but what do I know? Regardless, I'm sure you can see where this is going. In an effort to emulate her predecessor, Miss Mouse climbed into the stew and was quickly boiled alive. Hours later, Bird returned home with a heavy heart, having failed to find their missing, greasy friend. And I can only imagine his horror when he found that Mouse had inexplicably gone missing as well. And so, in a blind, justified panic, he searched through their house, somehow lighting a fire in the process, which quickly consumed their meager home. In one last bid to save what little he had left, Bird went to the well to fetch a pail of water, but in his hurried state, he tripped, stumbled, and fell into the well, drowning in the process. Moral of the story, never try anything new. Not even once, under threat of death. Also, there's another version of the story where, instead of eating her, the dog simply captures Miss Sausage as a slave wife, a fate she's unable to prevent since she was apparently forging legal documents. Yeah, I have no idea. Anyway. 
I'll probably revisit this topic in a later video, but that's all I have for you guys today. And I know there haven't been flourishes in the last couple uploads, but don't you dare think I forgot about my most recent flourish finders. Of course, we have a couple state champions like Sam Sam 2 and the Sneezy Afton guy, who's become far too powerful at this point, but we also have a couple rookies, like the Stingray Plays, the original Creature King, and Pretty Sujata Lacroix. But I also want to talk about this flourish in particular. It was technically found by Oreosaurus first, but Azuria found it maybe 30 seconds later. And within a minute after that, it was found by Rock Clan Hawkstar. So this one's up in the air as far as I'm concerned. Lastly, we have Mono Navadeno, who journeyed the road less traveled, and instead of finding a flourish, they made one of their own. Really good work with this little guy. It looks incredible. Anyway, if you find any flourishes in this video, then let me know in the comments down below or on my Discord server. Link in the description. And until next time, don't die. See you later. I have fun. Tell everyone you were